Hey YouTube fans, it's BGA. Sorry, it's been a while uh, since my last video. I've been extremely busy um, with work, etc. Uh, but I have something that will hopefully make up for it. Um, a lot of you know that my main passions are pens, photography, watches. Just real quick side note, this is a uh, Rolex GMT Master that I may have shown you before. I got this neat strap uh, for it. It's a NATO strap um, in red and blue to match. Um, so anyway, uh, I was told that my videos were way too long and that's why I'm not getting a lot of uh, views. So. I'm going to try to make this as short as humanly possible um, while still giving you um, the unboxing that I wanted to. You know, I was so excited for this particular unboxing that uh, I actually uh, started to open up the box in the mailroom um, of my building and I said no I can't do that to YouTube they deserve to see this so anyway let's uh, let's jump right in but before we go into the unboxing so all right you all have seen the saddleback leather this is the, the large size classic briefcase um, inside of here is the one of the Billingham camera camera bags. It's kind of the it's kind of my everyday carry camera bag. I've got batteries if I'm shooting film, film cable releases, uh, special microfiber lens cleaning cloths. I mean, it's it's really great, and it has a detachable strap that you can. Uh, carry separately, kind of like a man purse or something, um, if you choose to. So, real, real quick, in here, right now, well, we're already almost three minutes into the video, is my uh, Fuji X100S with the dragon, with, um, with the thumbs up to make you more sta your, sh your shots more stable so you can shoot at a slower shutter speed um, in conjunction with this uh, concave red dragon uh, soft release shutter button if you google bip beep boop something like that um, and then I've got this J and K half case that I had custom made for me out of uh, bridal leather and I'm telling you the quality is second to none. Um, I did not opt for the optional tripod screw I kind of like or the the battery openings card slots. Um, kind of annoying to change batteries and cards but you know I like that look. Um, and what else did I want to show you on this real quick? Um, okay, so on the back of it, one of the main dilemmas I had when I first got the camera was I, I wanted to carry it pretty much everywhere. Uh, you know, I have a, a Nikon D4, D700. Um, probably going to end up with the DF uh, soon, but just because I, I like the style of it. Um, but anyway, I just wanted something that's can be a point and shoot, but I like the nostalgic look of the rangefinders. I like the way the rangefinders operate. Um, if you want to know more about the X100S, I can do a separate review, or, and there's tons of reviews online. If if I were to have to choose one camera to own and one camera only, it would be the X100S. This the files that you get out of this camera are unbelievable. Um, so, like I said, I, I did order this in the bridal leather. Um, 
which is a major upgrade. Um, I, I did not get the shell quarter then, which you you all might know I have a shell quarter of an obsession, but um, didn't think it was worth that. But I did get the bridal leather. So. Uh, and I got the optional rear flap which completely detaches when I, when I shoot I take this off and it stays on sturdy when you're uh, not shooting and anyway so just to give you an idea of how this works your thumb sort of sits behind there and the fat part of of your index finger just sits on there and you compose and anyway if you don't know how a range finder works um, well you're certainly not going to get too excited by my unboxing um, today but uh, definitely look into it because range finder cameras oh I'm sorry and this is the Leica uh, a la carte strap this is not the strap that comes with Leica cameras. This is a special order strap made out of English bridal leather as well. And then in here I just have this like Gorilla Pod, um, whatever. So anyway, that's what I just normally carry in my uh, in my leather bag from Saddleback. They've kind of become a huge internet sensation. I'm not thrilled with them since their change of the tobacco color, but that's uh, a whole other story. Just um, unfortunate uh, that they messed with something that was perfect. Um, this is just to show you some camera stuff that I brought out. I, I had this camera strap custom made for me by a English bridal maker. This is a gorgeous, the, the, the built-in camera on my computer does not do it justice, but um, this is absolutely gorgeous and it's lined um, I had them line it in, in pigskin just like the Saddleback leather bags. Uh, I, I did order new uh, rings. He didn't have the correct size rings um, for the X100S. Uh, it's, it's a little bit snug. Um, so I haven't used it too much as it should be used, but to give you an idea, I had to make these two equal adjustment straps. Um, it's long enough so that it, it can go over one shoulder and it's there's only one of these made. He's currently making me two battery cases that are uh, custom designed for the X100S and P95 battery um, and a couple other goodies to go on the strap. I think I'm going to do like a, a um, like a hard-sided, maybe uh, m maybe fleece-lined um, belt hol belt holster for a rangefinder camera out of that same color tan. I love that color tan. He doesn't have my saddle maker doesn't have that much of it left. Um, so we're kind of thinking about some projects to do with it. It's a gorgeous tan. It will darken, un unfortunately. I think, I mean, you, you know, usually I like the, the aging of leather uh, and a patina, but um, I, I really like this color tan. Oh, and we're all, almost at 10 minutes. Um, amazing how time flies. Um, so, before we get to the unboxing, I do have to do something else. When, when, when I went back um, to my hometown, um, I, I was informed that my family had found a camera that belonged to my grandfather, and being the uh, photographer in the family, um, s sort of automatically given to me, and I, I know nothing 
I knew nothing about it when I first opened it. Just unzipped it, took it out, and in here is an absolute, I would say, 9 out of 10 in, I mean, knowing my grandfather, he, pr he probably used it maybe once. He wasn't really big on carrying things with him. Um, I forgot how this opens. Uh, hold on a second. Um, anyway, this is the... Uh, why am I forgetting how to open this? This comes up. There we go. And yeah, like both sides of this uh, cloth are perfect. Uh, if you watch videos about buying, okay, it's the Polaroid SX70 Land Camera. Um, and yeah, the the they there is a company that makes film for it, kind of like a lamography type product. I've never shot it. Um, but yeah, it's flawless. You have your focusing wheel. Um, there, I, I think they still offer flash bars for it from this uh, specialty company. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's just a really interesting leather covered p Polaroid in a really classy plaid lined case. Um, so, I'm going to have to learn some more about that um, and possibly get a couple uh, packs of film. The film's kind of the ill and expensive side. I think you only get like six, six exposures for maybe like, I, I don't even want to guess, but it, it, I remember looking on, on their site and seeing that it wasn't that cheap. Um, Anyway, something else that I got recently is the uh, Rode Smart Lab. Uh, the jury's still out on whether I like it. People say that it's supposed to work with the MacBook Pro. I was going to use it for this um, video instead of the the blue Yeti, um, but it I couldn't get it to work with my MacBook with my 15-inch unibody MacBook Pro. I would occasionally, um, when I was doing the, uh, when I was in system preferences under sound, I would occasionally get a blip, but, um, and, and I, I, I tried the headset port and the microphone port didn't seem to make a difference. So, alright, so now you guys know that, uh, I'm pretty much in love with rangefinder ca cameras. I haven't, um, taken a DSLR or an SLR out of uh, a bag in months um, and I normally take a, ca a camera wherever I go and once you switch to rangefinder and once you learn the little nuances um, there's no looking back um, rangefinders were the first uh, uh, portable 35 millimeter cameras and were almost replaced overnight by the SLR because the rangefinder camera you're not looking through the same lens that you're taking your shot um, so you have to be a little extra careful with composition but uh, in all honesty, I mean, I don't know about all people but you get used to it real quick and the benefits um, are huge. Uh, you just saw the size of, the, of that camera. Um, it's unimposing. I use it for street photography all the time. It's silent. Uh, if I go shooting with my D4 and my let's see, my 70 to 200 or uh, my 14 to 24, um, you know, people are a little bit more standoffish. So. Um, Anyway, so I have pretty much decided that I am going to become a rangefinder guy. And once you've decided that you are going to be a rangefinder guy, 
there is only one brand that um, will satisfy you and uh, if you're a fan of the Ken Rockwell dot com website um, he describes the Leica man and if you you know me from my other videos kind of describes me to a T I'm not trying to sound vain but just is what it is um, and except that I do in, enjoy shooting a lot more than he claims that the like a man does he kind of sees it m more as like a style accessory anyway so let's start uh, the sneak preview this is the Leica Summicron M lens. Uh, this particular one was during a time period when it was made in Canada. Um, I'm not even going to pretend to be a Leica expert. Um, I researched just enough to know just uh, what to get to start, what I needed, you know, etc. Um, I got everything pre-owned. I'm not, I have no plans on getting a Leica digital camera and not really the Leica M7. Um, I haven't heard too many good things about it. The M7 was their last 35mm film camera. Um, one of the reasons why y you may say you have an X100S, the image files are amazing uh, with Lightroom, you know, it's extra amazing. I have terabytes of photos that are not printed out and when I used to do traditional 35 millimeter darkroom photography and develop my own prints I had what I thought were gorgeous prints all over my house so this digital era is great but it's like my hard drive fails and yes I back up and I back out on cloud you know servers etc et but uh, if my hard drive fails years and years of memories are gone and I know if negatives you know can, can get ruined prints can get ruined as well so um, but what I found is it's I enjoy that or the organic experience of of film. And I don't know if it goes along with my you know nostalgic enjoyment of fountain pens and outdated tech um, or not. But uh, you you you'd be very hard pressed to to find a photographer who's going to say that like us crap they may say it's not what they prefer but um, Leica is basically built I was gonna say to Porsche standards I've heard a few people uh, compare it to Porsche um, however having owned a few Porsches I really hope not um, yeah uh, my last Porsche is 2005 and um, still had so I, I've had por I've had Porsches ranging in years from 1990 to 2005, and I don't understand why they can't get the simple stuff like electrical system, you know, keyless entry, uh, preventing a battery from going dead. Anyway, um, so I guess I would compare it more to. No, I would say a BMW, but it's they're not seen the way that BMWs are seen. You know, they're not. If you see somebody walking around with a Leica, it's usually very rare. I've probably only seen maybe one person in my lifetime. Um, it's actually working at a hospital on the East Coast, and. Um, and this was someone visiting a family member and uh, he had a Leica M. I wasn't into it at the time I knew the name Leica I knew it was synonymous with high-end stuff and I knew the approximate cost of the camera and I turned to the person sitting next to me 
I was like, ah, that guy has about fifteen thousand dollars worth of uh, worth of camera right there. And my completely unimpressed friend took out his iPhone, I think it was three at the time, and took a photo and may have Instagrammed it. But um, a anyway, this is the uh, Leica 11819 Summicron M. Uh, you can uh, you can go down to f2 on it. It's a uh, it's a fixed lens at 50 millimeters. Um, I was originally going to get the 35 millimeter lens. I kind of wanted to duplicate. You know how, how I am with films. Um, in the movie Blood Diamond, um, the female photo photojournalist has a Leica M6 with a 35 millimeter and has a really great little focusing um, tab and a square uh, shade. Um, after careful consideration I realized I my my X100S is a 35 millimeter so maybe in the future I'll get that but why get it as my first lens? So I ended up um, getting this, which doesn't have the same style. It does have a focusing tab, as you can see right here, but it's it's a little bit different style than the uh, the, the other one. You gotta like hook your finger in. It's a little bit nicer, in my opinion. Um, I didn't. I read some of the the Ken Rockwell reviews on the the 50 millimeter lenses. He has a great comparison of all of the uh, Leica 50s, and um, the newer ones that have a retractable lens hood. The lens hood tends to collapse, so this one actually does not have the uh, retractable lens hood. It just has the snap off cap and just look at the side this is 39 millimeters I mean I have I have Nikons that are uh, that are 70 7 um, that are 77 millimeters let's try to figure out Okay, so anyway, we'll we'll put it on the camera and then play around a little bit. But um, oh, that there we go. You just have to. It's kind of reversal. I kind of like that. Wow, that is a. It definitely has a German feel to it. I will tell you that it it has that solid. Um, build quality that you expect. Um, I know this particular these years this lens was made in Canada but uh, still still made to German specifications. Um, not, not that there's anything wrong with Canadian specifications either. Uh, um, so anyway Let's get to the unboxing after I promised this video would be no longer than 10 minutes and it's we're at 20 24 minutes now. So this my friends is my first Leica and now stay tuned because I did get some accessories for it. So if you came here just see the camera, you may want to stay a few more minutes. Um, great packaging. Uh, like I said, I, I got this pre-owned and I plan on using this kind of not very delicately. Most Leica people you'll find um, treat their cameras like infants and uh, 
I mean, I know photojournalists have used them for years, et cetera, but still, like, the, you know, unless your, your company's paying for the camera, most people um, don't really, are, are kind of afraid to actually shoot with it. So, um, you know, they, they, they don't want to scratch it, et cetera. That will not be the case, ladies and gentlemen. This camera I got to be shot. The only limitation being, like I said, I'm, as you know, I'm more of a fixed cost guy, so I'd rather spend $10,000 on a camera that I never had to pay for a print than half of that. And pay for prints. Um, it's just annoying to me to, to have to shell out money in small quantities. So anyway, this is the original box. It's pre-owned, but like I said, most like the people, I mean, they treat these like gold. Um, It's, it's honestly, the feeling right now is like that of opening up a really nice watch, like, even beyond a Rolex, like, let's say like a Patek Philippe or, um, or something along those lines. You've got this, uh, instruction manual printed on really nice paper. Um, And then you've got this box, which is like a, it's a plastic, but it's a substantial plastic. I know, um, I've seen that the, uh, silver, uh, I am actually going to take off my jewelry, at least for right now, when I play with this. Um, I've seen that the silver and black come, uh, I think it comes, silver and black M6 comes in a white box. Uh, this is a black box, there's lights on it, there's something rolling around loose in there, let's hope it's not part of the camera, no it's not, it's a um, silica gel piece, okay, so yeah, so the original uh, strap is right here, I'm not even going to bother taking it out because that's not the strap that I'm going to use. Um, but just to give you an idea of the presentation, no, that's, that's not the whole point of one second. <laughs> okay, it's something in the box itself, loose. okay, well, the camera is from, one of the reasons I got it was, uh, say 1985, so it's uh, from the year that I was born. Um, wow. I, I, I'm i sorry, I'm absolutely speechless. Fe feeling, ha holding one of these in your hand for the first time is like... I, I can't even begin to explain to you the the feeling. It's like size-wise, it's like the same length as as my hand. It's compact. It's this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I may get a case, a half case for it. I may not. Um, I also may get the uh, the magnifier. One of the great things about these cameras um, is that they do hold their value. So I mean, r relatively well, especially the lenses. Um, and especially the film cameras. Uh, since Leica went 
digital with the M. You know, they have like the M8, which didn't have a UV or an IR filter. You had to add, you had to screw that on. Anyway, um, and it takes a uh, tiny little battery, which I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to open it here now, but um, this is the battery compartment here. Um, if you keep the uh, shutter speed dial on bulb, um, it deactivates the built-in light meter. Now, th there's the M6 which was later referred to as the classic, which is this. Then there's uh, the M6 um, TTL. That's not saying this does have through the lens metering, but the M6 TTL has flash metering. I do not plan on using this with a flash probably ever. Um, it's not that kind of camera for me. Um, so yeah, you've got your film counter, your film count, which is glass. I mean, this is like solid, solid craftsmanship here. I honestly, wow. Let's put it on a. Uh, 250th of a second and see what it sounds like. It's just a, it's just a, it's, it's, it's just, wow. I'm sorry, I am absolutely speechless. I did not expect to be as in love with this as I am. Um, I did get one that's slightly dinged up. There's like a little. It's honestly looked worse in the pictures than it looks in person, and I'm not gonna feel so bad uh, carrying it without a without a case for a while. So um, anyway, uh, I'll stop the video there. That's a half hour. That's three times as long. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll be doing a follow-up video with uh, some of the accessories I got. I got some different colored filters um, so th for shooting black and white, different yellows. Uh, I plan on shooting Fuji Velvia 50 slide film, um, Portra 160 and uh, 400 print film. Um, so I have also all so I, I I I ordered different filters which to get a quality filter with the uh same thread pitch as in a 39 millimeter lens or an E39 um not not exactly the easiest task uh there are like a clubs like a swap meets uh, if I have time to get involved in something else sure um something else that's kind of neat with these older Leicas you can preview the uh, the frame lines um, you know what you're gonna have to go you're gonna have to YouTube another video on how all a rangefinder or how all Leica focuses because um, otherwise this would just be way too long but um, it it's it's unbelievable, and that's that's really all that I can say. So a anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the n new camera. Uh, if you wanted me to do a size comparison, a comparison between this and my X100s, um, what I think after I've shot with it, uh, etc. Just leave some comments below. But um, Thanks for watching.